We now return to Skybound Transformers. Greetings, wicked peoples. Fishy22.8 here, and today we have issues 11 and 12 of Skybound's Transformers. As Cybertron approaches Earth, Beachcomber circles around the cyclone that is sucking up all the sea life for Shockwave's Energon Harvester. Do you remember the first time we met? I was clanless, helpless, until you saved me. You showed me the way. R.C. tells Ultra Magnus as he lies on the repair bay when Aelita interjects from the doorway. It doesn't matter what he does or doesn't get, R.C. You made a choice. You abandoned the cause. R.C. cuts her off with a quick punch to the face as Aelita tries to stand up. You don't know me, R.C. says with a glare in her optic. As Aelita One walks away, Carly asks what happened to Magnus. He was a captive of Shockwave for hundreds of years. Carly asks, isn't Shockwave who has Jazz and Cliff Jumper? The very same. They are probably being tortured as we speak. Carly is horrified at R.C.'s words. How goes Ultra Magnus's repairs? I'm just now getting to his exterior plating. But Optimus, without Ratchet... Bringing him back to full health will drain us of almost all the energon we took from the dam. We could keep him like this and revive more Autobot. When Ultra Magnus himself cuts off Wheeljack. I must be part of this new resistance. I want to fight. Back on board the Nemesis. Very good. As Soundwave holds up Ravage's badly damaged body, he pleads with Shockwave. Brother, even with the spare parts I have gathered, the rooms to Ravage are dear. I need Cyberdrone technology. I would like to travel back with you. Soundwave, you must focus on the task at hand. Take this moment of quiet to reflect on your priorities while I check on the status of my fortress. Shockwave spits at Soundwave as he turns to walk through the portal to address the Combaticons. As soon as he walks through the portal, the Combaticons start hounding him with questions. Silence, dogs! Do not concern yourselves with such matters. Should you not be watching the walls of this fortress? Our Energon readings will be spiking the Autobot Rebel sensors. Man the battlements and prepare for assault. They know what power we wield now. Turning his one evil eye towards the storage tanks of Energon. And what a beautiful power it is. I've taken some surface scans of the part of Cybertron in Earth's orbit. The Nemesis is one connection point of that portal. But if my readings are correct, there's a second source point on Cybertron inside some kind of large fortress. Shockwave's fortress. It's where I escaped from before jumping through to this planet. Aelita One says as she walks in the door. It must be where he's hoarding the Energon he's stealing. A sort of storage facility to help fuel his war effort back home. If we destroyed what's left of the Nemesis, it would sever the link to Earth. But Shockwave already's taken so much from this planet that he's surely got enough Energon on Cybertron to take it over completely. Shockwave not having enough fuel to power his forces is the only reason the Autobots on Cybertron have survived this long. Well, he's got his fuel now, and then some. As a small voice pipes up, aren't we forgetting something here? What about Cliff? We gotta go find him. On that, we agree, Carly. That won't be easy, Optimus. You saw what Shockwave can do. They've got the upper hand. Aelita, we must rescue our warriors. Rescue our warriors? What about the Autobot warriors ground to death by the Decepticons when Optimus Prime left the very war he helped begin? It was me in the trenches for countless years. It was me that lost everything there. You haven't seen how bad it's become. Aelita One spits at Optimus Prime. I understand your anger, Aelita One. 
but Jazz and Cliffjumper are in mortal danger. We must focus on them, and then destroy the Nemesis in order to save this planet. And what of Cybertron? Leave it to Shockwave? There are still Autobots on our planet fighting to the death. Would you leave them to die? Stumbling over his words and taken aback at the ferocity that Aelita One has shown, Optimus simply responds, I am confident in our abilities, Aelita, and our old friends. Carly walks in and sees R.C. loading all sorts of armament while she's muttering to herself, I can't believe what they did to Magnus. They're animals. They don't deserve to exist. As Carly tries to get R.C. to talk about it, Aelita One walks up. R.C., I just wanted to... Please, Aelita. Let's just forget it. Just listen. I was going to say it's good to see a fire still inside you. Outside the Ark, Optimus Prime stares off into space when Aelita walks up and asks him what's he doing. Thinking of an Autobot now gone. Add him to the pile of the dead, I suppose. Ratchet said I was too concerned with this world. But I brought the war to them. They need us now. We have our own problems, Optimus. That is true. But I am beginning to think that we need them to survive as well. So, a bull rush on the Nemesis. They'll be ready for us. We'll lose more today. We're not going head on. Prime walks away as Aelita asks what does he mean. Among all the Autobots, who has teleportation abilities? None. Exactly. Prime responds as he walks towards Wheeljack and RC. Coordinates locked in, Optimus. Skywarp's coding accepted it. Able and willing, if you can believe it. Handing Aelita One a bunch of explosive charges, Wheeljack continues. I also constructed the charges you asked for. I coded them to a trigger on your personal keypad so you can get far enough away, set it, and press it. Thank you, Wheeljack. How is Magnus? Almost done. I've got your opticals displayed on the computer over here, so we'll be able to find you when you're ready. We'll be right behind you. When Carly pipes up and says, Don't you realize how much of an asset I can be? You're making a mistake. Someday you'll be ready, Carly. But for now, you must stay back. As Carly says that I am an iron apprentice, R.C. kneels down and puts her in her place. And I am your iron intercessor. Like Magnus was for me, and I can't have what happened to him happen to you. Carly interjects, but Clipjumper has saved me so many times, I have to save him. R.C. turns around before walking through the portal and gives Carly one last bit of reassurance. I will save him, Carly. I promise. Sitting on the shoreline, Spike asks Beachcomber what did he find. The Decepticons are taking all the light from the ocean up to Cybertron. It's awful. It's what's meant to be! Astro Train growls as Beachcomber walks up with some energon to give him. Here, this will keep you alive until your fellow Decepticons find you. No! I will not be left in captivity yet again, smart dammit! With Astro Train screaming in the background for his freedom, Spike asks Beachcomber what should we do? What can we do, Spike? All this war, all this violence and killing, nothing helps. We must go. After a few moments of pondering, Spike agrees. He and Beachcomber start walking away. Don't worry, Spike. We'll find another quiet part of this world. As the two trek through the forest, they come across a deer. Spike has an instant flashback to when Optimus Prime showed compassion over the one he accidentally killed. As the deer runs off, Spike turns to Beachcomber. I know how you feel, Beachcomber. It feels wrong to fight, but I don't think I have to. I just know I can't run away. He then looks up at Cybertron, inching closer and closer to planet Earth. I must admit, Autobots, your resilience is most impressive. You keep trying to get in my head, and I'll keep playing my tune. Shockwave cuts Jazz off with a quick slap to the face. 
Please do not smear your bravery with musical platitudes. If you refuse to talk, I have other ways. Better ways. As the mad scientist picks up a device and walks closer to Cliff Jumper. If I want to see what you've experienced in this new world. Jazz bellows leave him be as Cliff Jumper starts to squirm in his restraints as Shockwave puts the device right in front of his optic. I can just take it from the source. With a small dink to the back of his head as Optimus Prime's ion blaster makes contact. You shall do no such thing, Decepticon. Drop it. Shockwave drops the device as RC holds him at gunpoint while Optimus Prime frees his Autobot captives. How are you doing, my old friends? I'll be all right, Optimus, but Cliff is hurt bad. As Aelita One comes in, telling them that she's planted the last charge, R.C. cuts her off. How does it feel, Decepticon? Does it feel good to be on the other side of a loaded barrel? How about I end you right now? R.C., stop! Prime bellows as he grabs her. Remember how far you've come. Don't lose yourself to this path again. As Shockwave kicks R.C. into Optimus Prime, he takes off running and grabs Cliff Jumper. Not another step! Shockwave makes a break for it, holding his new little red shield. To me, my Decepticons! Combine yourselves presently and to devastate her! Brushing off the confusion from the chaos, the Constructicons merge to form Devastator. As the behemoth slams its fist down, the Autobots barely avoid it. Don't worry, Ilata! Prime yells as Shockwave turns to Soundwave. Soundwave? What is that? Some sort of portal. As two figures start running through the portal, Optimus finishes his statement. This is why we have backup. Oh yeah! Wheeljack chuckles as he and Ultra Magnus, armed to the teeth, step through the portal, ready to fight the Decepticons. The first Decepticon that Ultra Magnus lays his optics on is the one and only Shockwave. As the memories start flooding back through Ultra Magnus's memory core, he starts to stutter. I... I... I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. He screams as he flees the battle, leaving the rest of the Autobots in shock. But an amused shockwave simply responds, <laughs> I broke his mind, and now I shall break your bodies! Back on the Ark, Carly is staring in absolute horror as the view monitor shows what Optimus Prime sees. Decepticons! Shockwave exclaims as he transforms to be held by Soundwave. Let us be done with this Autobot blight. Forever. Carly makes a break for her van. She has to do something. Jumping into cover, Wheeljack asks, What happened to Magnus? I do not know! As Carly turns the ignition of her van, slams it into gear, and floors the accelerator, racing towards the teleportation portal opened by Skywarp. Optimus, are you still connected to the charges? I lead us set them, but I can't blow the nemesis with Cliff Jumper so close. He is cut off by the little human bellowing, when are you going to learn? I am here to stay and to fight, as her van slams into the chest of Soundwave, knocking both Shockwave and Cliffjumper from his grasp. Cliffjumper manages to grasp a hold of Carly's van as she speeds away from Soundwave. As she's apologizing to Cliffjumper, Devastator slams his hand down, smashing the rear end of the van, sending Cliffjumper flying into the air. With the heavy hitter of the Decepticons now distracted, Optimus Prime seizes the opportunity. Autobots, while they're distracted, let's get our fallen brother! Charge! As Cliffjumper tells Carly to hurry, get out of the wreckage, he barely throws her out of the way when Devastator slams his foot down, crushing the van and pinning Cliffjumper's arm. The combiner then kicks the wreckage of the van, still attached to Cliffjumper, through the space bridge. Just as Swindle is rounding up the rest of the Combaticons to go through the portal, Cliffjumper and a van come smashing through. 
Using the rushing water to gain altitude, Optimus Prime pops out of the surf behind Devastator and screams, Now I lead up! As Optimus Prime opens fire with his fusion cannon into the back of Devastator's head. While the behemoth is stumbling, Ilita 1 zips around his feet and wraps his legs Empire Strikes Back style. The disoriented and top-heavy behemoth stumbles and falls onto Shockwave's harvester, much to the horror of the mad scientist. My harvester! No! With the machine destroyed, the portal to Cybertron is now closing. As Cybertron slowly returns to its place in the universe, Shockwave runs towards his space bridge. I shall bring reinforcements! You will see! You will pay! As Optimus runs into the portal to save Cliffjumper, Wheeljack tries to stop him. Optimus, the charges! We can send Cybertron back completely right now! And I will, Wheeljack! But it was me that left Jazz and Cliffjumper behind! But... I will not leave them again! On the other side of the space bridge, Shockwave is addressing the Combaticons about their new pest they have. When Vortex turns around, Uh, guys? Hoosh! The mighty hand of Optimus Prime cuts off Vortex and slams him down hard to the ground, which makes him fire at Blastoff and shoots him in the face, as Optimus Prime turns his Ion Blaster on Swindle and opens fire. The three remaining Combaticons flee the room as Shockwave screams at them. Cowards! Stand and fight! With a glare of rage in his optic, Optimus Prime approaches Shockwave. Come on, then! Pointing his blaster at Cliffjumper, Shockwave starts threatening. Another step, and he dies! His threat cut short by his arm being blown clean off his body as Optimus Prime coldly asks, Is this all you do, Shockwave? Ratchet! Magnus! Live! As the Cyclops now lunges at Optimus Prime, All you do is take away what is good! The Autobot Commander slams Shockwave to the ground and starts repeatedly pummeling the Cyclops. As each fist makes a connection, Optimus Prime starts having flashbacks to him holding a young Spite Witwicky as an infant in his hands. And then, a nightmarish vision. A taloned hand holding the baby as it is being consumed by Cybertronian wires. As Optimus grabs a hold of Shockwave's face, something snaps in Optimus. He drives his mechanical thumbs deep into the eye socket of Shockwave, ripping apart his head. What have I done? Optimus says in disgust as he recoils away from Shockwave's corpse. Welcome back to the war, Optimus Prime. I finally see your old self returning. No, I'm not like that anymore, Ilita. I... something came over me. I don't know what it was. Realizing that the portal is almost upon them, Optimus Prime scoops up Cliffjumper. Cybertron is returning to its rightful place in the galaxy. We must get back to Earth before we return with it. Come, Cliffjumper. Let's go home. Just before Optimus walks through the portal, it explodes, sending him and Cliffjumper flying backwards. Ilita! What?! You are home, Optimus. We need you here. The Autobot Resistance needs you. Here. The Cybertronian Resistance Commander pleads with Optimus Prime, pointing at all the Energon containers around them. All this Energon taken. We can use it. Together. No. Not like this. As Optimus brings up his data pad to start setting off the charges, Ilita 1 stops him. Don't bother, Optimus. I never set the charges in the first place. Turning towards the Energon storage crates, Ilita continues. The Earth has so much to give. Look at all the Energon we have already. Energon taken by Shockwave. You're willing to feed Cybertron with the blood of their planet? Optimus Prime starts shaking with rage as Ilita apologizes for playing his hand like this, and yes, she would sacrifice Earth to save Cybertron. Leveling the fusion cannon that once belonged to Megatron at the Energon storage containers, Optimus coldly states, Earth needs me. Earth needs us. Please, your people need you. She starts pleading as she tries to stay his hand. I need you. I'm sorry, Ilita. 
Don't abandon us again! She pleads as Optimus Prime pulls the trigger on Megatron's fusion cannon. The force of the explosion is great enough to shear off a chunk of Cybertron, and Aelita is miraculously spared as she is thrown from the explosion. Gah. You chose. She looks up to realize Cybertron is now back in its place in the universe, far, far away from Earth, and that a chunk of Cybertron is now missing. You chose Earth over us. The remaining part of Cybertron slowly starts falling back towards Earth. As Optimus Prime enters Earth's atmosphere, <laughs> burns! Oh, if this... If this is the end of my spark, then I thank the Primes that this is my last sight. I know, Optimus. This place reveals new beauties every moment. Beachcomber corpse as he's riding his surfboard trying to catch up to Optimus. Beachcomber? An insanely confused Optimus Prime asks as he reaches out to grasp Beachcomber's hand. The two Autobots surf down the cascading water as it falls back to planet Earth. Optimus Prime looks on in horror. What have I done? What have I done? as the remaining part of Cybertron finally lands in the Pacific Ocean. And that has been issues 11 and 12 of Skybound's Transformers. I hope you enjoyed Wicked Peoples. I know I enjoyed reading them, and I had a blast recording them. And I want to give a huge thank you to Kirsten Greenfield for voicing Aelita One and bringing her to life in this comic dub. I was able to work some magic with R.C., but I was unable to do it with Aelita. Thank you for filling in that role. And now for the part of the video that I'm not the strongest in. Summaries. A.K.A. the end of a video. I love how Skywarp has been turned into a pseudo-autobot out of happenstance, and he may be, after hearing R.C. muttering to herself, finally put two and two together that, hey, the Decepticons are not all they cracked up to be. Look at what they did to me. And I'm a Decepticon. I personally think that Skywarp, if he hasn't had a complete change in Spark, is going to be the new version of Auntie. And if you've read the old school G1 comics back in the 80s, Auntie was the original computer system for the Ark. And she went rogue trying to kill the Autobots through a series of events. I think Skywarp may become Auntie, and if he doesn't go down that route, then he's going to be a very useful asset for the Autobots, and hopefully he can gain back some of his sentience, and not just be a somewhat sentient computer that can't really speak. But I really am enjoying how his teleportation ability is being used as the Autobots' mode of transport. It kind of reminds me of 2001 Robots in the Sky, Space Bridges, the Armada, Teleportation, Space Bridge, or the Space Bridges in Transformers Prime. I really did not expect Ultra Magnus to run away from the fight like he did, but given how he spent a little over 200 years being tortured by Shockwave, I fully understand him running away. Post-traumatic stress is a horrible monster in one's own mind. My father suffered from it, and thankfully he was one of the lucky few that got to outlive all of the negative thoughts and horrible shit in his head from PTSD. I do hope Ultra Magnus gets the similar fate that my father had. He gets to overcome the PTSD, and when it is his time, he at least goes out contently. And speaking of going out, talk about going out with a bang, Optimus Prime. You sheared off an entire chunk of Cybertron to save the world of this little fish. Although now I am curious as to what's going to happen on Cybertron with Aelita. Is she still going to hold more resentment for Optimus Prime and basically turn into an evil branch of the Autobots trying to take over the Earthbound Autobots? Or is she just going to accept that he made his choice and move on because, like she said, welcome back to the war, and war is full of hard choices that don't have any good outcomes. So, I'm curious as to how this is going to play out. And Shockwave's being killed. Holy shit.
What a brutal end. He he deserved the end. Look what he did to Ravage. What Optimus Prime did, he did what Soundwave was going to do, so Optimus Prime has atoned for his sin of shooting Ravage in issue one, or was it two? I can't really remember. I had the memory of a goldfish. Please bear with me. I forgot that I even had Braun in the fucking series so far. Um, if you want really good summaries of any part of the Energon universe, issues 1 through 12 of the Transformers, the Cobra Commander, any other part of the Energon universe, do please go check out Moonbase 3. He does that way better than I do. I just put voices to stuff. That's all I do. But he gives really, really good breakdowns and summaries way better than I ever could. So please go check him out if you want better breakdowns and more information instead of just somebody putting voices to it, which is all I do. And if you've liked what I've done, please, I beg you, go out and buy your own physical or digital copies of any of the comics I've covered, whether it's the Terminator ones from IDW or any of the current Skybound run. Please go out and buy your own physical and digital copies to support the people behind these comics. You may not like everything the company does, but support the artists behind the writings and the stories that you do like. And I really love this Energon universe so far from the sides that I've read it. And I want to see it continue. So please, help support them. The money should go to them. I don't want to get paid for doing this. I'm doing this with the old school YouTube mindset of I'm doing this for the fun of it. I am finding enjoyment in this. And it's amazing that other people have found some enjoyment in what I'm doing. That fuels me. I don't want the money from this, so please, send any of the money that you would send to me, go out and buy more Transformer comics, more Skybound comics, more Energon Universe, more IDW. Go out and buy the comics. Don't give it to me. Okay, now that that's out of the way, and I do feel better about recording this now that I said that, because I've been stuck on the outro of this for like three damn days and with all that being said i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video so please go out and buy your own physical and digital copies of any of the subject matter i've covered and as always this is fishy 22.8 logging off thank you wicked peoples